Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference brought to you in part with partnership with Animal Evac New Zealand and our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. Our next session is going to be supporting livestock-based response in emergency through the LEGS training program with Susan Bishop and Kathy Watson at LEGS in the United Kingdom. It's a privilege to have them present today. Mm -hmm. All bios and abstracts are available to read from our website under speakers. Before we start, a little basic housekeeping. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled, so if you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature. We will endeavor to answer those questions at the end. This year, we have enabled multilingual closed captioning, so you will, if you would like to hear the presentation in another language, just click on the closed caption icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We encourage you to use hashtag GADMCONF for Twitter and other social media. A short evaluation will be made available when you exit the session. And just a reminder, the video recordings will not be available until they've been edited and they will be released later this year. Without further delay, it is my pleasure to welcome you to GADMC. Take it away. Thank you, Rebecca, and um, it's great to be here and have this opportunity to be part of this conference. Um, my name is Kathy Watson. I'm the LEGS coordinator, and with me is Susan Bishop, LEGS technical and project manager, who will be uh, taking the second half of this presentation. Livestock keepers around the world are affected by a range of crises, as we all know, including man-made and natural disasters, and these have a massive impact on, impact on their lives and their livelihoods. So LEGS, or the Livestock Emergency Guidelines and Standards, is a set of um, international guidelines and standards for the assessment, design, implementation, and evaluation of livestock interventions in support of people affected by humanitarian crises. LEGS draws on evidence-based group practice from around the world, um, which is incorporated into the handbook, training materials, and, and, other, and other resources. And the application of this guidance is designed to support better quality livestock based responses, which in turn contribute to improving the livelihoods of crisis affected communities. It is designed for the humanitarian context, although inevitably it has implications and reaches into longer term development, and with a particular focus on low and middle income countries. LEGS draws on the experience and the process of SPHERE and is a member of the Humanitarian Standards Partnership alongside SPHERE, which is made up of 10 organisations focusing on, on quality standards for emergency response. And it essentially it aims to provide a process to design and implement projects. The rationale or the history of LEGS, um, LEGS began in 2006 in response really to concerns about poor quality livestock projects in emergencies. So there was concerns that livestock uh, animals were often overlooked in disaster management, which is, it's, is really the theme of this whole conference. Um, there were cycles of inappropriate or badly implemented projects. And these included a lack of analysis or poor analysis. Um, local capacities and services were often overlooked or undermined in the rush to respond. Urgency and, urgency and timing were often the excuse for poor quality projects, but at the same time, response was often late, even in slow onset droughts, which in theory could have been well anticipated. Impact assessment is, is historically uh, chronically limited, so there's a lack of learning from what went well and what could have been improved. And there's often weak coordination between emergency and humanitarian response and, um, and longer term development um, in, all, in all contexts. So the aim of LEGS is to support the, the saving of lives and livelihoods through two key strategies, helping to identify the most appropriate livestock interventions in emergencies and providing standards, actions and guidance notes for those interventions based on good practice, which has been gathered from around the world. And we have three legs livelihoods objectives, which underpin all our work. And they are that legs technical interventions support crisis affected communities to obtain immediate benefits using existing livestock assets or protect key livestock assets and or rebuild key livestock assets. And that's the focus of all our, our work. So one of our main 
outputs is the handbook, the legs handbook, which is made up of two, two halves, two sections really. The first section, is um, general principles, decision making, and planning shown by the by the red icons at the top? How to use the book, introduction, principles, and emergency response planning. And the second part focuses on six um, specific technical interventions: feed, water, veterinary support, livestock shelter, um, livestock offtake, and provision of livestock. Each of these technical chapters includes minimum standards, key actions, and guidance notes. The first edition of the Legs Handbook came out in 2009. The second edition uh, came out in 2014, and we have just produced the third edition last month. Was, it was published last month, following a wide-ranging consultation process, which involves a review of the previous edition and investigation of areas where topics weren't covered by Legs or needed to be enhanced or further developed or update, updated. So the key features of the update, one is that we have new standards on preparedness in five out of the six technical chapters. And this reflects the importance of anticipatory action in effective emergency response. And for those of you who were on the previous uh, presentation by James Sawyer, that links very much with one of, the, one of his main conclusions about the importance of coordination and preparedness mm -hmm. before disaster strikes, rather than just trying to re respond in the moment. Um, what were our core standards and cross-cutting issues have now become LEGS principles. And we have expanded the third chapter to cover all stages of planning, including developing a response plan. And I'll go back to that in, in a minute. And drawing on feedback and studies from our preparatory phases, we've updated and revised content in some key um, issues, for example, including information on cash and voucher responses, local ownership and inclusion. Looking at the response planning that I mentioned in chapter three, these are the four stages and tools of the LEGS approach as, as represented in the, uh, the new edition of the handbook. Um, the first stage is initial assessment. The second is response identification. The third is analysis of interventions and options. And the fourth is the response plan. And underneath that, you can see the, the tools that LEGS presents. Most of them are participatory tools with the aim of identifying the most timely, appropriate and feasible responses in, in emergency situations to support livestock and the people who depend on them. And underpinning all of this, we have meal monitoring, evaluation, accountability and learning. In response to the consultation, that we carried out, we've tried to make the, the handbook a bit more user friendly than the last version. So we've had it got a new design, colors and navigation um, graphics. And um, we've done a, a plain English review to make the language, the English more accessible as well. The legs case studies cover both process and impact of, um, and they provide examples of how livestock based responses have been um, um, implemented and instead of being in the handbook this time they're now on the legs website uh, we've got 22 new ones as well as old ones and this is a summary of how you can get hold of the new handbook um, you can download it from the website as a pdf which is free you can purchase a copy from the publisher or you can uh, view it online on the interactive handbook um, website so the next steps for us regarding the handbook are that we're translating it into French, Spanish and Arabic right now. Um, we will be holding launch events for those editions in September and October this year. And then next year, we will be revising, revising and updating our training materials to align with the new handbook so that it's all um, in sync. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Susan Bishop, who's going to talk a bit more about training and um, institutional legs. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Cathy. So um, I'm going to move on to the legs training program now. Um, after publication of the first edition of the handbook, a training program was designed, which was based on regional training of trainers, TOT courses, which aim to build training capacity in countries affected by humanitarian crises. The graduates of the TOTs are equipped to run the legs core training course in their own countries and regions. 
This core training course brings the LEGS guidelines to life and um, enables practitioners to implement the LEGS approaches in practice. Uh, the regional TFTs can be commissioned by any organisations, institutions and take six days and is made up of three days of the LEGS core training and the further three days of, of adult learning techniques and is a very participatory course. Um, only LEGS trainers, i.e. those who have actually participated in a LEGS training of trainers course, are authorised to conduct the LEGS core training course. Um, we also have a half day awareness session for decision makers and donors, which is targeted at humanitarian donors, policy and decision makers and program developers. Um, and we also have an online, we have a gender e-module um, and we are in the process of finalizing a drought e-module, which hopefully will be available um, very soon. Thanks, Kathy. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit now about the LEGS core training online. This was developed in 2021 and it's um, basically an online version of the core training and it can now be commissioned using the accredited online trainers. It was developed in response to COVID-19 and also a LEGS training review which recommended the need for more online resources. Um, it's obviously a virtual course and it mirrors the in-person LEGS core training um, and it's carried out entirely online. It has two elements. Uh, the first is a self-paced learning guide where participants work through the learning activities at their own pace. And then the second section is a live virtual, live virtual interactive workshops where particip participants come together and these are facilitated by an accredited online trainer. Um, there are seven modules in all, so there'll be seven self-paced learning sections and seven online workshops. Uh, and this course is available in English, French and Spanish. Um, so just to run through some of the recent trainings that we've um, undertaken or delivered, um, we ran um, two LEGS TOT courses um, recently. One was commissioned by Tufts University, who have a project in um, Karamoja in Uganda, and that was done in April 2023. And we ran a course for BHA in Washington, DC this May. Um, we have also done some awareness raising sessions um, in Colombia. We did two sessions with uh, key stakeholders in May of this year. Um, and we just recently, uh, with Brook Ethiopia, supported them to run uh, the online core training course um, for their team of staff in country. So uh, now we're going to move on to legs uptake. Uh, LEGS is now used as a reference handbook for emergency livestock sector response by a growing number of key organisations, institutions and donors, including international organisations such as BHA, FAO, OCHA, ECHO, ICRC, the World Bank, uh, also NGOs such as CAFO, TROCARE, World Animal Protection, the BSF, Mercy Corps, um, also by some national governments uh, in Ethiopia, Kenya, India, Indonesia, Nicaragua, and Vietnam. Um, and it's also used in donor appraisal, design, implementation, and evaluation of emergency interventions. Next slide. Thanks, Kathy. So um, one of the things that we're really focusing on at the moment is institutionalizing legs. Um, so as LEGS grew, it became evident that there was a need for greater uptake and institutionalization of LEGS at country, local and global levels. But LEGS didn't really have the capacity to engage with organizations at country level and relied very much on the LEGS local community of practice to promote LEGS. Um, key challenges included limited coordination between organizations and individuals engaged in LEGS, and also limited uptake by government disaster planning and response units. LEGS therefore decided to focus its institutionalization efforts in specific countries, and the concept of focal points or target countries was initiated based on several criteria, namely an analysis of risk of humanitarian crises, high dependency on livestock for livelihoods, 
interest from key institutions and organizations and the potential for impact and a motivated community of practice. So um, looking at the objective in, of institutionalizing LEGS, LEGS, so the key objective really is to ensure that LEGS is the key point of reference in official policies, strategies or guidelines of the National Disaster Management Agency or whatever the agency who takes the lead in disaster management is called and related technical ministries and looking particularly at livestock assessments, project design, implementation and evaluation. And a further objective is that LEGS training is rolled out across relevant government and non-governmental actors in each selected country. And the role of LEGS in all of this is very much one of a facilitator rather than an implementer through the provision of support training and other tools and materials, working alongside key partners who will take this process forward in the longer term. So since 2022, uh, we've been working to develop institutional focal points in three target countries, Kenya, Mongolia and Colombia, to ensure that LEGS becomes embedded within key government institutions uh, and the activities that we're engaged in um, to, to move this forward include country engagement workshops, which bring together key stakeholders to review the current status and challenges regarding the institutionalization of LEGS in that country. Awareness raising sessions for senior government and non-governmental organizations, um, and then helping them to develop country engagement strategies. So this is led by the stakeholders and the strategies outline key roles, actions, and fundraising priorities to take forward institutionalization activities in each country. Um, <clears throat> and then internally, we're reflecting, having a reflection and learning process to try and draw out the lessons from the engagement process that might be applicable to other countries in the, in the future. Because obviously, as a small organization, we're not going to be able to replicate this in all the countries where LEGS is used. And so we want to use this very much as a, as a learning platform. In addition to the handbook, we also have other LEGS resources. Um, and these include um, short briefing notes. So we've got some on livestock in camps, animal welfare, uh, we also have videos, we have an evaluation tool and a drought tool, um, and all of these are available on the LEGS website, um, and there's quite a number of publications on there. So you can find out more about LEGS um, via our website, and you can also sign up um, and join the LEGS mailing list via the website or by contacting our administrator. So thank you very much. That's a fantastic presentation. Thank you so much. And uh, leave it on the slide. I love this picture, but please leave it on the side with all your contact information so that the, the attendees can get that. Okay, so now we have plenty of time for some questions. And I see that we have at least one. Um, Paolo's asking, how long does it normally take or should it take on average to complete the one through four steps process leading to the development of the contingency plan? Uh, well, that's a really interesting question. Thank you, Paolo. I think the, um, uh, the, the, the sort of quick answer is how long is a piece of string, which I appreciate is not very really helpful. Um, I think... It, it it varies hugely depending on the on the particular context on the type of the disaster, um, and it also depends on how much information is already available. Because um, if you recall, the, the 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 first of the four steps was initial assessment, and we have checklists covering quite a range of information that that we feel should be available in order to make the. Uh, an effective response plan, but in many cases, if someone if 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 um, that information is already available, then it doesn't involve fresh data collection, in which case that, is, that, that um, stage can be moved through quite quickly. I mean, our key point is that, that that information should be there and should be part of the analysis and the decision making. Um, if, if none of that information is, is easily available, then that will take a bit of time to, to carry out the assessment. Um, the response planning, um, response identification, which is the second phase, um, 
we are very strongly behind the participatory process, which involves at least one workshop, bringing together key stakeholders and, and vitally including um, members of affected communities. And in this case, the livestock keepers themselves, not just the authorities. And that, you know, takes a bit of time to organize. But the idea is, if, you know, with the participatory tools that we offer, that should helpfully lead to a plan that says, right, well, the priorities here are veterinary support and livestock feed. So that's what we're doing going forward. Then the third stage um, is about um, honing in on those and using the legs handbook and other and other guidance to say okay we're going to do livestock feed or we're going to do veterinary support what else um how are we going to do that what, which of the particular sub options or whatever is most relevant um and that takes a little bit of, of planning time as well and then you sit down and, and write the plan um so I realize I'm not putting any any specific timings on these but I hope talking through maybe gives you a bit more of a feeling for how long it might take and I think the final thing um, I would want to add is going back to that point I mentioned about preparedness uh, and, and the importance of being ready beforehand. A lot of this can be done before a disaster strikes. And one of the things we say, and I'm sure many people in disaster management um, would agree, we have, um, even with rapid onset emergencies, we know that they might well happen. You live in a hurricane zone, you live in an earthquake, affected zone there's a volcano that might erupt you don't know when it's going to happen so you can put some of these things in place um so I'll, I'll stop there that was a rather long answer and imprecise but hopefully still helpful thank you no that was fantastic i think gerardo has a question thank you um your community-centered approach is excellent um can it uh, in the future involve uh, working animals like uh, dogs or even pets Sue, do you want to take that one? Yes, I'll take that one. Thanks, Gerardo, for that question. Um, well, we do include working animals from the perspective of them being involved in people's livelihoods. So, for example, legs covers, um, say, equis, you know, that might be involved in transport, um, uh, oxen, ploughing, camels in transport. Um, but because we're focused specifically on livelihoods, uh, we don't look at pets um, and I guess also because there are many other guidelines I think or certainly uh, organizations that are working in that field so we because may, the thing about legs is it specifically focuses on the livelihoods aspect of, of livestock um, and so working animals is definitely included and then there are references to that throughout the handbook and the training but obviously and we you know we work with partners um, such as the brook, you know, who who focus very much on on working equids, but as I said, they are working animals linked to livelihoods. So I hope I hope that uh, answers the question. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>